we have a sign in for that. So if you can go ahead and get out to your smartphone and uh, or your dumb phone and send a text to 650-763-405. And if you can include all, all of the following information, uh, the pound sign or hashtag if you're of the younger group and 0000, and the next line, first name and last name, and then your email address. What this is gonna do is you will um, get some emails from uh, PCA with some great tips on there so you can look forward to that. So if everyone can just do that for me real quick. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, just sort of put your hand in the air so I know that you're finished and we will go ahead and move on. <clears throat> Okay, great. All right. So has everyone, anyone ever heard of the Positive Coaching Alliance or been to a PCA workshop before? No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. We are going to be talking about being a double goal coach, which is coaching for winning and life lessons. So this is a workshop. This is not a lecture. So I'd like to start out if you would get up and go find someone you don't know and introduce yourself, just tell them your name, maybe what sport your coach and also just talk briefly about why you coach. And then we're going to come back and talk about that for a minute. OK, so now that we're getting all back together, if I can have a couple people share, just share why you coach. I'll share. Um, one of the reasons I got into coaching right off the bat was for a job. <laughs> um, <laughs> I needed money after college, and somebody offered me a coaching position, so I took it. Um, but the reason I stay in coaching 22 years later is, um, I just really, I really find it enjoyable. It's fun. I really love sports and I love what sports did for me. And I like being able to take kids that might not see potential in themselves and mm -hmm. help them, you know, learn to push themselves harder than they think they can and just really enjoy sports for what it's worth. Great. That's a great response. Great. Um, well, just to introduce myself, my name is Laura Milton. And I've been a volleyball coach for about 23 years. And I played multiple sports growing up, but once I started playing volleyball, that was sort of it for me. I just loved it. And it was like when I was playing, there was nothing else in the world that mattered but what was happening right on that volleyball court. Uh, I played collegiately at Virginia Tech. And while I was there, I started coaching camps and a couple of club teams. So my senior year, uh, they're coaching my second club team. And as a senior, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, or at least for the next next year. And I remember being in the gym for our first tournament that season and walking out of that gym and just realizing that nothing, I felt the same way as I did when I played, that nothing else in the world mattered but what was happening in that gym. I literally walked out of that gym and just was like, oh, there's a world out here. And so that was sort of an indication to me, like this is this is what I, I need to be doing. And uh, why I coach, um, I just, I love the aha moments. I love just watching kids push themselves farther than they think they can. I watch them, I love watching them learn and grow. And here I am 23 year, years later, still doing it and still loving it. So, uh, so that's a little bit about my background. And as a coach, even though I've been coaching for a while, I always want to be better. I want to be a better coach today than I was yesterday. And I know that there's always opportunities to learn. So I hope that you'll look forward to this, uh, this next hour and a half with me as we all kind of grow and learn together and find out some more ways we can make a positive uh, impact in kids' lives. So who is PCA? The Positive Coaching Alliance, or PCA, was founded in, as a nonprofit in 1998 at Stanford University. And annually, we train over 80,000 coaches and reach over 3 million youth, uh, through tw over 2,500 live workshops, and over a million visits to PCADevZone.org, which is our resources online that you have access to. So that's just a little bit about uh, who we are. So let's talk about positive coaching. So really quick, grab someone next to you, and uh, I would like for you to just share uh, maybe an experience you had as an athlete that you experienced what you felt like was positive coaching. And then we'll come back and share a couple of responses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as we come back together, if I could get uh, maybe someone to share what an experience you had as an athlete that you felt like was a positive coaching experience. I'll, I'll share on this one. Um, uh, so on my college volleyball team, I was by far the weakest, most un, uh, 
it, the, the weakest uh, physic, physically and the least athletic uh, uh, on the team. But um, my coach um, really had a way of making me feel important to the team and always involving me and um, making me feel good about being a part of the team. Mm. I th- I, you know, I, th- I thought that that was very skillful on his part. Uh, That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay, well, Laura. Uh, Laura, by the way, yeah. that was that was a guy by the name of Fred Sturm. I don't know if you recognize that name. I you, do. you might be too young. Okay, mm-hmm. that's yeah. a, that's a side side light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what does this phrase mean to you? So, um, we're going to talk about positive coaching, just creating an atmosphere that supports best possible performance. So, in the example that you just gave, you probably felt like you were going to perform better because you were feeling like you were getting something positive uh, from your coach at that time. So the power of positive. So we are not necessarily just talking about just being positive and everybody getting a trophy kind of experiences here, Um, but what is the the power of positive? And so we have here on this slide, Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, who is a psychology professor at the University of North Carolina. And she's just talking here about how the perception is that negativity or threat will produce, um, is the best way to get what you want out of employees or players, but it doesn't work as well. And she even says that leaders' positive emotions are more contagious than anyone else's. And I find that to be true in my own coaching as I, as, as the way I respond to situations is the way my players are going to respond. So if I respond in a positive way, then that's how they're going to respond and, and, and also in a negative way. So um, here is a, um, a Sports Illustrated cover from 2015 just with a study showing the benefits of a more positive approach. And elite coaches agree. So here we have eight elite players and coaches. These these are all on our national advisory board. And um, can anybody, looking at the names of any of these coaches, you probably recognize some of these names. Is there a word that you could just think of that would describe uh, any or all of these coaches? Successful. Okay. Winners. Winners, yeah. So um, even elite players and coaches are, are t- talking about how positive is going to be a better way to uh, to reach players and people. And what negativity does is it distracts you from your task. I'm sure we can all think of, of times in our lives, whether it's a coach or a teacher or a parent or anybody who's responded to us in a negative way. And uh, it just it's distracting from what we're trying to do. So. So let's also let's again grab somebody next to you and just talk about why you think there might be so much negativity in sports. And then we'll we'll get a couple of responses on that. Why do you think there's so much negativity in sports? Okay, so as we get back together, if I can get a couple of responses of why you think there's so much negativity in sports. Uh, My partner and I were just, oh, sorry. We were talking about um, negativity from the coaches and athletes versus negativity from the parents. And I think from a parent point of view, they're just under pressure to have their kids succeed. And they feel like success on the field is going to equal success in life. Mm-hmm. They think that's the only way that, that their kid's going to be happy is if they win. Mm-hmm. And, and um, so I think that's where the negativity comes from, from the parents. But from the coaches, I really think it's just lack of education. Like they don't, mm-hmm. they've never been taught a different way. They coach the way they were taught and they know that yelling at a kid makes them jump, makes them move. So mm-hmm. I think they have this you know, idea that I have to earn the respect and I have to be this forceful person. And so they try, <clears throat> they know what, they use what works easily and they don't think about what it's doing in the long term. True, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and, and you think about what is negativity and who does it benefit? You know, if it's not benefiting the kids, is it, is it actually even benefiting the coach? Um, so I think those are all uh, some things to, to think about. So let's talk about PCA's vision. So PCA's vision is to use sports psychology research and the best practices of great coaches, as you could see with our national advisory board, and there are over 200 people on our national advisory board, all elite uh, coaches and players, and what are things that they do. And so we're combining those things, and our, our motto is better athletes and better people. So we want to develop kids that are trying to do the best that they possibly can do and that are trying to excel on the court but also in turn producing uh, better people in the long run. And PCA provides a lot of support uh, with research-based coaching models, practical tools, and ongoing support through our PCA Dev Dev Zone and the the talking points emails that I mentioned that you will receive after this. So 
So our next question is, what makes a great youth sports experience for kids? Um, you know, we you know shared earlier about as athletes, positive experiences that we've had. And I know we want that for kids. So let's go back to the question that we talked about at the beginning of why you coach. Uh, did anyone here start coaching to be a negative influence on kids? Mm. And I think the, the answer to that is probably no. I don't think anybody intends to uh, to create a negative experience uh, for any any kids. And so what are some things, just shout out, what are some things that you think make a great youth experience? sports experience for kids getting getting to play in exciting uh competitions okay okay i think say having fun. oh sorry though i was just gonna say having fun having fun okay i think to see success kids like okay. to feel successful and it's an, an opportunity for them to feel successful okay great Great, those are all good responses. So with all of our years of research and just talking to athletes and coaches, we find that a meaningful athletic experience generally has these three components to it. Feeling connected to teammates and coach, believing that they can improve, which is gonna be that success, and feeling proud about acting with integrity. Um, and so I know I often tell, especially parents at the beginning of a season when they might be thinking only about winning, is that at the end of the season, what the kids are going to want is that they want to know that they've improved and they want to have made friends. And they're not going to, at the end of the year, remember, I don't remember wins and losses of most of my seasons that I've coached. The kids aren't going to often remember those things, but they're going to remember that. And those things are going to carry them. So if you get these three things, feeling connected, improvement, and acting with integrity, if your players get those things, what do you think will happen? Anybody just shout out. They want to keep playing. Yes. They're yes. going to enjoy it. Yeah. They'll probably play better yeah. too. They'll probably play better too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because they're probably going to feel like they have some some freedom there. Um, that there's there's not the pressure when they're we're trying to accomplish these three things. There's not necessarily the pressure for for winning. The PCA's coaching model uh, involves these three things: connected, improving, and integrity. So these are the three things that we're going to be discussing uh, through the rest of this workshop. And so we have a video here from Herm Edwards, a former NFL coach and player and so let's watch this video and see what he has to say by the way i don't have this video i need to um it's not working on mine so okay we can let it have so i'll have to work on that later um okay so here we have this question when the book of life is written will it say that you made a difference and so just sort of think about that for a minute what what are your players uh, former players or current players, what will they say about you as a coach in the future? Will you have made a difference in their lives? And it will be a positive or a negative one. So here we're going to move on to the PCA's model of coaching. So I mentioned at the beginning, a double goal coach. So we have two goals here. One is striving to win. We are trying to be the best that we can be. And I, I don't know about you, but I didn't start coaching because I wanted to lose. So we are trying to strive to win, but we also want to teach life lessons. And the the big thing that distinguishes the double goal coach with a maybe a win at all cost coach, someone who only cares about winning, would be that they are focused on teaching life lessons and seeing what is going to happen in the future and what are they going to learn from that. So um, let's just shout out some responses of what do you what are some life lessons that kids can learn or people can learn through playing sports. Teamwork. Teamwork. Resilience. Resilience. Good. Work work yeah. ethic and discipline. Yeah, that's great. Working as a team. So there's bouncing what's back that? from bouncing I said working back. with <laughs> <laughs> working with all different with working with all different types of people. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ruben. Bouncing back from failure, winning gracefully, losing gracefully. Good. Good. Those are all all good things. And so so we learn those lessons by winning and losing. You're not going to always learn by winning. Um, and so you, you have to lose sometimes in order to, to learn some of those things like the resilience and bouncing back. So we are trying to strive to win. So we, are, we want to do both things. We want to strive to win and teach life lessons. And those are going to bounce back and forth with each other. When you're striving to win, you're going to be learning. And when you're learning, you're going to be, it's going to um, motivate you to strive to win. And I know, um, as, you know, I've been coaching for a few years and, we don't often know those lessons that those kids are learning at the time. We have no idea. All we can, all we can do is hope that down the road, they're going to learn all those things that we, we just discussed. I was really fortunate to have about a year ago, a player email me 
and um, just share a couple of things to me about some things that she learned um, through her years of playing for me. And she was on relatively successful teams through her high school career. So, um, but one thing that really struck out, st or, um, stuck with her was just not giving up. She said that she's currently finishing nursing school and she is just tired and just trying to push through. Um, and, and she keeps hearing my voice in her said or in, in her head saying, are you going to give up? And, and she said that really motivates her now to just keep pushing through and finishing strong. And she said that when she was playing volleyball, that when I would say that to her, she would just be thinking, well, this is just volleyball. What difference does it make if I really give up? But now she's understanding that it wasn't about that. It wasn't about the volleyball at all. It was about learning the character of, of continuing on and learning the persistence and that character persistence. So, so I hope that you over time will get and have gotten some um, responses from, from your players to, uh, to kind of get those little things that kind of keep you going to know that they are learning. So that was just one quick lesson I want to, a quick story to share with you. And now we are going to move on to our principles. And that's all I got. All right. Well done. All right. How'd you feel doing that? You seem pretty smooth there. Didn't seem yeah, like it was, <laughs> once I got going, I, I felt fine. I feel like when I'm up in front of people, I'll be fine. You know, <laughs> this is, this is definitely harder. I will be. The yeah. First to that. yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. And sorry. I see the sun is coming through my window. So uh, sorry that you're seeing me like half in the sun and half not in the sun, but oh, yeah. okay. We're not, we're not worried about the view. <laughs> it's a very, a very artistic view. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm rearranging part of my house. So I just moved my desk upstairs. And so now I'm going to have to deal with the sun coming through the window. So <laughs> that's why I had the curtains closed behind me because you would get blinded yeah. by the sun. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I'd love to hear. So what we'd like to do in these demos is give you some feedback that can help translate what you're doing here to a live workshop. So okay. I'd love to hear some feedback from, and I don't know if Trennis is there, but Joe and Ruben. Um, things that they really liked that you did, and then suggestions that you have. I'd like to start, Kelly, um, beat, beat Trennis and Joe to it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, so in terms of translating this practice uh, artificial setting to a real workshop, um, mm -hmm. I, I was super impressed with your pace, Laura, because mm -hmm. that opening, there's a lot to it, and it's easy to get bogged down and, 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 and to do too much. And, you know, some of the points, you know, can be made pretty, pretty quickly, and you did, and efficiently. Um, and you did not sacrifice interaction. I, mm -hmm. I, I felt involved the, the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so I had you for about 16 minutes um, going through that. Now, in a, in a live workshop, that's going to be longer because the paired shares are going to mm -hmm. be longer. And, sure. will you, be, you know, will you be able to do three paired shares in that section? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you're going to play the video. The video is at least a minute, you, you know, okay. so, so that 16 minutes in a live is, is going to easily turn into 20 or 25. And okay. um, so the point I want to make is that the pace that you had here, you, you, you're going to want to keep that same pace okay. in, in a live setting. Mm -hmm. um, hey, uh, Laura, I thought, I thought you were just fantastic. Th this is your first, yeah, this is your first demo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yes. I thought you were fantastic. I thought you utilized the PowerPoint very well as an aid that you were true to it without coming across like canned, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, I, I, I feel like uh, you, you've done a very nice job of taking, taking what PCA says and, and, and making it your own as you, as you take us through it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it right. didn't, feel like, didn't feel like I was listening to Jim Thompson felt like I was listening to Laura or, or mm -hmm. working with Laura. So, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll stop there. Kelly. Great, thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, Ruben. Joe, are you there? Hey, Laura, nice to see you. Hi, Joe. Um, I, I, I'm not cameraing right now. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> I, I more have a question than, than a comment. You talked about winning at one point, which I mm -hmm. like. And if, I agree with everything Ruben said. First of all, it was great, and I hate these. So if you feel weird on this, <laughs> trust me, that just makes you human. Um, it's yeah. terrible. It's, it's torturous for me. Kelly's super good at it, um, but Kelly's super good at everything, so she doesn't count. Ha uh ha. -huh. So, um, but my question would be, you talked about winning. For this first 20 minutes or, or, or segment of the workshop, what would be a win to you in terms of how, how the the participants, where, where they are with you by the end of it? 
what, what's a win for you? What are you trying to achieve most of all in this first part? I would say for them to be intrigued and to, and for them to be excited about what they're going to hear next. Okay. And how, how would you, so if that's the, that's a great answer. How would you say, what would you gauge yourself, grade yourself in that regard then? I'm not saying it. I don't know. I'm just asking what you think. Yeah. Um, I would, I give myself a B honestly. I feel like I gave them enough interaction to, to, to be wanting to learn what was happening next. Good. I, I, and that's, I guess my only point is know what your goal is in that. Okay. Know what your win is. And, you know, as you're assessing yourself and your own work, first of all, give yourself a lot of credit for the things, things you did well. Um, I find in mentoring teachers and adults that the first thing they'll do after a lesson is, you know, you'll say, well, how do you think it went? And they'll, they'll give you a litany of terrible things. And it mm -hmm. wasn't bad, you know, so give yourself credit for things that went well and, and have something against which to compare yourself. So I really okay. wanted them to feel engaged and, and like you said, intrigued, I think was the word you used. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you, if it, you'll, you'll get that from them. And sure. one of the things that you'll grow in as a trainer that, you know, it is one of the harder things is reading and listening to the room listening with okay. not, not just your, your ears, but your eyes and, and their, their gestures and, you know, whether their butts are close to the back of the seat or the front of the seat, um, you know, you'll know the answer to, to your win question there, but just know, know going in what you're looking for. Okay, great. Thank you. Really hey, Kelly, I know this isn't about Joe, but I, um, I want to learn from Joe. Joe, how would you have answered your same question when you do this particular workshop? What do you, what do you, what is a win for you in this opening section? It's a great question. It depends on the room, honestly. If if I know question. I'm in an, if, it's a great question. Well, I, I, I want to ask it. <laughs> if, I'm in, if I'm in an adversarial room, um, I, I I sort of want to be a little bit more aggressive and challenging, and I want them to start to break down some of their predisposed notions about what we're doing. If it's a more friendly room, then then I want to make sure that that I'm first and foremost honoring their expertise and make sure that they feel like they're a participant who's contributing to the workshop, not just gaining from the workshop. So it really depends on the setting I'm reading and that I'm in. Got it. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that question. Um, trying to yes. set up if you're there. I am. Okay. <clears throat> no, I, <clears throat> that, hi, all. Hey, you did an amazing job, Laura. I know that it's been something that you've been working on and I know it's, uh, I think that your your work is, has paid off, you know, in terms of just comfort and, and making it your own. I think, like I said, I, I felt like, or like others have said, I think you um, you listened to a lot of other people, but I, I, I felt like it was yours. It wasn't something that you were trying to regurgitate or recreate, um, which I think is, is, it shows leadership number one. I think naturally all of us feel, feel, feel like we want to emulate somebody else that's already kind of done it and, you know, how we learn it and, and you did it, did it your own way, which I like. Um, I really like the fact that you were able to um, create some level of emotion around your own personal story um, and, and it not being really um, about you. It was more so about what, you know, one of the, um, the, the women that have been able to, to be under your guidance said, um, I think it's easy to say, well, I'm a, I'm a coach and I've won this and this and this. And, and um, certainly people can give you uh, kudos for that. Um, I think it's even more powerful when you're talking about someone using the lessons that, that they were able to, to develop and um, identify uh, while they were playing for you, which I think not only elicited emotion, but also, and hopefully triggers others to, um, you know, you know, feel like or remember what someone else did for them um, mm -hmm. and potentially what um, they're hoping to do for others. Um, sure. So I, I would encourage you to continue to uh, to use those types of stories. You know, those are, you know, things that you've done. Those are God given. Those things are real. And I think that those are the things that, at least in my opinion, I seek out. And I feel like we make a bigger impact when we use those more than we, you know, um, use other things. So I would, I would definitely give you a uh, kudos for that. So congrats. Great. Thanks, Trennis. Thanks guys. I agree with everything. I'm, I'm looking at my notes, like checking them off as people are saying them. So I don't repeat what everybody said. Um, Laura, I think in terms of your preparation and the content and knowing everything, you did a great job. I agree with Ruben that your pace was really good. And um, it is hard to get through all of this. And I think it's a hard balance between 
not overloading people with information. So I really like the way, like when a slide was up, you didn't read it. You didn't hit every single point on it, but you got the point across. And I think that's that's really important because this intro is long and I think it's uh, it's good. I think if you were gonna ask me, I was thinking about that question that Joe said, a win for me at a workshop in the beginning of the workshop is to um, assure the coaches that this is gonna be valuable, that the next 90 minutes is gonna be really valuable to you. So I almost think of it as, I love, I like the word you said, intrigued. I like to inspire and motivate them to want to to want to get better and to want to learn more. And so um, the comments that I'm going to give you are more of translating it into live workshop because I think you know as that in this setting you're smooth, you've got it down, you've practiced it, your transition was great between slides. So I'm going to just go to the live workshop right away. Mm -hmm. um, I really love the way that just asking the why question: Why are you coaching? Why are you here? And I think it's a question a lot of coaches don't ever have to answer. Um, I, my first coaching job was literally because it was a job and I never thought about why I just took it because they were like, Hey, we're going to give you 2000 bucks for the season. I'm like, great, I'll take it. So, um, I think that's a really good question. And I really like the way you did that. I like the way you put your intro in, like you weaved it in after the fact. Um, I think that was really great style wise. I liked that a lot. The question that you asked about experience, um, share your experience as an athlete that was positive coaching. I love that question. I usually ask think about a positive coach that you had, but I like that you made it personal because that's where you're, you're going to get the connection to the coaches when they're actually thinking about how did I feel being coached by a positive coach and tell mm -hmm. them about that experience. So it's just a little change of the question, but I really like it. Yeah, Kelly, she made it personal and she she made us think specifically, mm -hmm. not just, you, you know, you know, think about something that the coach actually did. Yeah. That, you know, I like mm -hmm. that a lot. Yeah, and we do a lot of <laughs> so it's good to hear a different question. Yeah, and kind of what I was going for there was to not focus on the negativity, was to have them focus on the positive. Because I know in some of the demos that I watched, you guys commented on that, like, great job. Like, you didn't focus on the negative part. And and so where I did talk about negative later, you know, that it, instead of them having to time to vent about all these negative experiences, mm -hmm. they just thought about a positive one. So Yeah, no, I think that's great. That's great. And specifics. I think specifics mm -hmm. are really great, too. Um, when you went into the, uh, oh, the only thing that I think in the intro that I just, that I would kind of touch on more is that by the end of this workshop, you're going to have tools that are going to help okay. you because that's a big part of the next three principles is giving them concrete tools that they're going to be able to use. So I think just mentioning that somewhere in the beginning, um, can really help too. You might want to say something like, you know, if somebody's explaining a positive experience that they had, um, whether it was a coach saying, you know what, you didn't quite make the shot, but I really like the way you hustled. You know, maybe somebody would give an example like that. You can link it to that. We love that. We call that rewarding unsuccessful effort. And throughout mm -hmm. this workshop, you're going to get lots of tools that are going to help mm -hmm. you just like okay. that. So I like that too. Um, what else? So I loved your questions. Like you're so funny because you don't like, you say something funny, but you, you have a dry sense of humor. So I like <laughs> it. You know, when you said, you know, I didn't, I didn't want a coach to be negative. Nobody wanted to sign up to be a coach mm -hmm. to be negative. And you know, I didn't coach because I want to lose. Like you just said it so matter of factly. But I just think that I liked your sense of humor there. Um, <laughs> when you're in a live workshop, after about two or three pair shares in the in the course of about 15 minutes, people are going to start. It's going to start watering it down a little bit because mm -hmm. they're going to always turn to the same partner and they're always going to say the same thing. And so just look for other ways to get people to engage other than just pair share. Um, in the beginning, it's hard to say, okay, get up. I mean, if you're going to get people up and out of their seats and into groups, I suggest you keep them there for a little bit. And mm -hmm. once people are up and out of their seats, um, you know, find three people that you don't know, find two people that are, that have the same eye color as you, whatever it is, keep them up for a little bit because you mm -hmm. can mix them around while they're up, but okay. getting people up out of their seats and then seated and then up out of their seats, like that's, that's really hard to do in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But I like to get people up right away. And then mingling and mixing and st they stand up and they watch, you know, part of the workshop and I keep them standing and then I have them walk across the room and find somebody else just to kind of get the blood flowing. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there's other opportunity you know, turn to the person behind you, stand up, sit down, vote, um, writing down an answer. Like, for example, when you said the um, what would a former or future player say about you? I like to have coaches write that down. Because uh, one of the things, my little shtick in my workshop is I bring sticky notes and I have them write that on a sticky note. And then I encourage them to put that on their clipboard or put it on the dashboard of your car or put it somewhere that you'll see it. Because that's a huge reminder of the kind of coach that you want to be. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, did I coach like that today? Because sometimes mm -hmm. and that's where I give my story that I realized I wasn't being a positive coach when I saw the mm -hmm. sticky note and went, no, I was definitely not that coach today. <laughs> um, 
just using other, you know, other learning styles. Some people like to write things down. Some people like to share out loud. So <clears throat> that was it. The only other suggestion I would have is that you are very easy to listen to. And I think it's a great thing. Your communication style, you know, it's, it's so, you're so smooth and your communication styles are so, are so smooth. Um, I would just encourage you at some point, vary it up a little bit. Maybe when you get into the tools and you, you, know, you want to act out a coach that's draining a tank or, you know, speed it up or just, just to keep it throughout the 90 minutes. But I would not change a thing about your delivery. I'm just giving you some suggestions that can kind of, mm -hmm. you know, keep people on their toes a little bit when they see this, sure. poised, you know, poised professional person and all of a sudden you're like flipping out on a player and everyone's like, whoa, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. a suggestion. Yeah, I was kind of, you know, envisioning the whole workshop and in terms of the, when I get to the principles, like some different things I had in mind to do, like mm -hmm. that's a good point about mm -hmm. the pair share and then to do some different things like, you know, acting out or whatever. So, so um, yeah, those are great suggestions. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So the next step we have you do is I'd like to see you do the intro and then I'd like to see you do one of the principles because that's okay. where the principles are different than the introduction because we really get into having them practice using the language, explaining it well, but giving them time to actually adopt some of these principles and figure out how can I do that in my practice. So um, the last step for the course is to do a final exam of one of the principles. If you would like to go straight to that, you can. If you want another practice session on one of the principles, I'll give you that offer as well. But if you just want to go straight to like the final doing one of the principles for us, that's fine too. Yeah, I can I can do that. Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's Kelly, right. Did you, Kelly, did you mean to say final exam? Or did you mean, mean to say final demo? I, I meant to say final demo. What okay, so it was a Freudian. It's a final demo, um, Laura. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want you to be like me and freak out because it's a final exam. Um, <laughs> hey, Kelly. Um, can I take just, for her can, final exam, so it's probably in my brain. Can I take just a moment, Kelly? Uh, can I take a moment? You may take a moment. Thank you. Um, Trennis, it's so awesome having you on these auditions. You're, you you add so much and your insight uh, to the trainers, I think is super helpful to them. And it's helpful to Joe and Kelly and me too, to hear your thoughts on these. So just really appreciate you being here. Um, of course, no, anywhere else. And, and of course, Joe, your contributions are, are, are always awesome. Kelly, is this, the, is this the time where I get to um, show Joe how much I love him by teasing him a little bit publicly? Sure. Joe, you ready? <laughs> you there, Joe? You're muted. Joe. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to hear, hear you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe. Always, I look um, forward to that. What if so I said Joe, no? What would Joe, you do? No, no um, question for you. So usually when you have your camera um, turned off, there's a picture of you that yeah, shows up. And today we don't. Weird. You did, you you did you change it? Did you change it? No, but I get, I get so much crap for it. I should, but no, I, that's why I leave it. Oh, okay. I, I, was so wondering, I was wondering. If, <laughs> I, no, I was wondering. No, wondering if Kelly and I had uh, uh, teased you enough that you you made a change no, or something. That would just cause me to make it to leave it there. No, um, I, you know, how contrary I am. Uh, no, I got a new computer. I don't know why it's doing that. But oh, okay. look, it, it's good to always embrace whatever we look like in what is that, ninety one or ninety two? Whatever yeah. that, picture, whatever that picture was taken. First so. of all, that, that picture was like two years ago. So. Yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. like yeah, like that is you were definitely wearing cross colors and listening to different music at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, you'll just have to. You'll just have to uh, anticipate and wait. I mean, Trennis is jumping on the bandwagon there. Yeah, painted him on, a man. nice picture. But okay, Kelly, so, thank you for, for letting me do that, Kelly. That's back, all back, right. Back.